Hey guys, Jeff Norris here. I decided to make a video since everyone is asking online um, about my fly tying bench or vise uh, that I made out of galvanized stuff. I've disassembled it uh, to show you kind of how everything goes together. I haven't taken this apart. It's kind of like already pipe taped and everything together, but I'll give you guys measurements uh, of everything so you can get an idea of how I did it. Let me get the camera to go so you guys can see. I will start on this guy right here. Let's see. So, this is just a half inch floor flange with, uh, I just screwed it into the wood of the desk. I didn't want to take that out. To give you an idea of how tall the one I'm using is, it's, uh, this is my ruler. Uh, one, yeah, so it's about half inch galvanized pipe, five and a half inches long to a regular half inch Schedule 40 PVC T. Put the uh, bearings in there, I just pressed them in. I didn't do anything really spectacular with it. I didn't want to take them out because it is plastic, so I don't want to risk breaking it or anything. But I just put it in my vise, uh, pressed them in there, and then or squeezed them in together. You know, you put them one on the other side, put it in the vise, squeeze together, and they go in there pretty well. Uh, they fit, you know, it, it doesn't really expand it too much, so I think it's pretty good. Um, let me get this set up so you can see. So this is a, I think that's a good angle, you can see that. This is the assembly portion, portion that goes up towards the top. Uh, this isn't, let's see how long it is, six inches? Yeah, we'll go with six inches. This is a six inch, five sixteenths uh, bolt that I got just from Home Depot. It's regular zinc plated, and it fits right in, see, it fits right in the uh, skateboard bearing hole. Uh, and that's the basically the, the swivel portion of it. Uh, to show you, just give you an idea of the dimensions of this. This is a 3 8 galvanized T to a 3 8 galvanized 45 to 3 8 by 3 inch, um, just a pipe nipple, and then a 3 8 T. And then these, uh, basically, to put the pliers into here, which is the same assembly up here, I don't want to take this out. Um, these are pretty well in there. I, I cranked them down pretty good, and then I put a locking nut on this side so it doesn't back out. So this is pretty fi This is fixed, basically, to this, which is why it's able to rotate without this spinning. Uh, but the same methodology of using these uh, T's, or what do they call them, the hammer-in nut plates, I guess, for wood. So you, you basically take your, uh, this is a, I guess, um, quarter 20 thread, and it fits right into my pliers. So that's the the end of the pliers has a thread in there. I took the original little adjusting knob out and just found the right thread for it, which is this quarter twenty uh, bolt by. Let's see, quarter twenty by four and a quarter, or four and a half. Um, I threaded these on here. This is just like my adjustment handle. It's not really necessary, but this is pretty well locked on there, so I don't want to take it off. But the idea is we're going to put it through this T, uh, same as we did up here. So. You, you thread this guy down, the, uh, the little nut plate, thread it all the way down towards the bottom, uh, about there. You need to leave a little bit of space so that you have an adjustment for closing the jaws on the pliers. But basically you fish that in there, um, and you can see the cone, the, con the conical side fits right inside that hole and holds it concentric. Take your other one right here, um, put the conical side on, in the opposite direction around the inside. Uh, and push this or thread this down. Let's see, so when I thread it down, it basically centers it up. Um, it gives you a good center axis through that T, and then you can adjust back and forth with these. But this is basically how I'm adjusting through to the pliers. So uh, once I get that in, we can thread this guy on. Uh, it is kind of annoying to thread that down. Back up a step. I forgot my locking nut. So, take this out. I realized I like to put a locking wing nut on the inside here just so you can adjust. Or so, once you get your pliers adjusted, 
you can avoid it uh, backing out. This is why I was hesitant to make this video. Once you get it apart, it's kind of like putting a Chinese finger trap back together. It goes together fairly easily, but it's just once you get it set up, it's nice to leave it where it is. Um, especially when you have different varying hooks and stuff. I, I'm a pretty novice fly tire. Um, I do it, you know, I, I make flies and they definitely work, but I'm not, you know, I don't make the prettiest flies in the world. Um, and I use pretty basic hooks, just standard must adds and stuff, nothing too expensive. Um, so once I got my one, you know, my hook cap set on my pliers, I kind of leave it there. It seems to work for the few hooks that I use. So this is the thread, or this is the wing nut that I'll thread on first that I messed up. Forgot to put that on, but this is basically our locking nut, and you'll see in a sec when I get this all together. So we thread that all the way down, and we thread this guy on with the cone side facing out, or these little teeth facing that way. Thread that all the way down. Leave a little bit of a gap. Put that on there, just like we did before. Thread this down. Once we get that in place, that's pretty good. We can adjust that. See, that's our lock. So you use these to adjust it and this to lock it. Um, fiddle with these pliers. Yeah, I think I just lost my spring. Yep. Yeah. Harbor Freight pliers. I don't know. I don't know exactly how they measure plier lengths or whatever, but come on now. There we go. So, um, give you an idea of how big this is. This is just a, uh, I think I got these, yeah, I definitely got these at Harbor Freight. They're five inches long. Uh, just to give you an idea. And again, when you adjust your plier length, let me just get this threaded on here without messing it up. Uh, yeah, so I'll just thread these down. Just holding it so it doesn't explode on me and lose the whole spring again. So we thread this guy down. Come on. Come on. There we go. Alright. So that's basically the gist of it. And then you can see how open that gap is here. And when I... If I, clo if I tighten that guy up, I can adjust this. A little finicky, but once it's in the vise, it's easier. So if I if I tighten this up, you can see that gap closes. So I can do that. You can see that gap opening and then closing, just like you would with normal vice grips. So once we get that in place, you can kind of play with the uh, you know you know where this lies by adjust, adjusting the tension in here. So you can back this off and rotate it forward just so they lock in the right axis you don't want it to be like crooked or anything like that um, but that's basically how it was and you, when if you go to build one of these you'll see what I'm talking about you can adjust this basically how this assembly stack of these threads goes to get this guy trued up and tight right here um, I suppose you could like tack weld it or something if you really wanted to once you get it happy or you're happy with the position of it um, so I said that this nipple is well, three inches long. Um, obviously this is going to be determined based on the length of your pliers to try and keep that axis in line. So, you know, if you have longer pliers, you're going to need a you know, longer, or, you know, a, a longer uh, junction here to, so that you're kind of like a right triangle or 45 degrees, um, trying to keep that in line with the hook. So then I'll just show you here, hopefully you can see that on the camera, I'll just fish this in. Oh. Actually, before I do that, I'm going to show you. So these are the washer stack that I use. Um, I, I think one of the upgrades that I made to this from the last video, I just added another nylon washer. Um, so I thread that on there, or I pop this guy on here. And that just allows this to not basically wear down the metal on this washer, this fender washer. Um, so I put the nylon on and the fender washer. And then I've added these rubber uh, washers. I found these at Ace. They work pretty well. Um, so I fed... I, that's the, basically the washer stack that goes on both sides of this uh, bearing housing. And then um, push that guy in there like this. And then just on the other side, the same way, we've got the nylon washer. The, oh, I'm sorry. 
the rubber washer, then the fender washer, and then the nylon, and then this is the wing nut that captures it all and allows you to tension the friction basically of the whole unit. So you can crank this guy down and it's, you know, it'll stay like that. Um, or you can loosen it up and it, uh, the camera. it'll, you know, free swing. All that's adjusted in here. And that's basically it. Um, let me know if you guys have any more questions. Hopefully if you like how it uh, turns out. Hopefully you guys can build them and it works you know, just as well for you as it does for me. I, I don't really, I do actually have another vise over there. I don't use it too often, but it, it's useful for smaller stuff. If I have a really nice fine hook or something I care about, but you know, 90% of the flies I tie and use are on this guy right here. It works well for me. Just gotta retune it to how I had it, but it'll be all right. There you go. Thanks for watching guys. Appreciate it.